recording now. Thanks every, for everybody for jumping in. Uh, we are now in the, this is the second uh, uh, specification steering committee meeting for the baseline protocol community. Uh, we, we've all introduced ourselves in the previous meeting, which is published on YouTube in a, uh, in, on our playlist, I think it's called baseline baseline. Uh, and, uh, so, uh, we will, and we will publish this one as well, uh, to the, to that, to that, um, to the baseline channel. Uh, there was a suggestion that we, we, uh, publish those to the baseline channel directly. Um, I kind of like giving credit to people that do work. And so, um, I, I, I suggested the, to the person that did the, did the work um, that they put it on their own channel so they can get credit for it. But, um, and, and I think normally that's the right, the right call, but for future TSC SSC meetings, we'll put it directly on the channel. Um, and uh, somebody ought to hire that guy because he, he does great work. He's fast and, uh, and he's doing it all for free. So I like, I like that fast and free, two good words I like. Um, so very kind of them to, to do that. Hope everybody's doing okay. Daniel. Uh, we are yeah. recording. Everything's yep. good here. Thanks. Hey, John, sorry I'm late. Hey, York, no worries. Uh, so we're just getting going. Um, all right, so here's the agenda. I, uh, I will share my screen real quick. And go over to the SSC meetings. Uh, we just had our TSC meeting. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick recap on that. But we're going to, the agenda items I have, um, and I'm, while I'm going through these, uh, please think of um, ones that need to be added or modified. Uh, we're going to form a spike team to create an SSC draft governance document. Um, so I'd like to find a, a buddy, a pair of buddies. I like the buddy system. So uh, we find two people to really uh, draft that this week. That would be really good. Um, uh, because unlike the TSC, we do not have a, a formal uh, SSC governance uh, document and it's probably high time that we get one. Uh, SSC is, is deliberately more flexible, but we should have some rules written down so that people can know what we're doing and how we do, how we do it. Um, I think having had a, a week or two to, to figure out the job, I think we're, it's, we're ready to write some stuff down, I hope. Um, so looking for volunteers on that. Uh, second is the incentive of framework and funding. Um, I'll talk about um, some things that we discussed on the TSC, about uh, some, fun, uh, some uh, incentive uh, opportunities, in particular Gitcoin hackathons, which has uh, come to us with uh, some suggestions. Um, working uh, uh, and then we're going to have a working session 20 minute activity where we're going to work on semi semi asynchronously but live and hopefully this will be fun for everybody and will work and not be too weird but we'll, we'll basically go quiet for between 15 and 20 minutes and we will chunk out some uh, big project uh, level um, structure now I'll, I'll take you through that in a minute and then we have to decide the next meeting do we have any other uh, items for the agenda? Going once, going twice. York, anything there? No, just was looking at it carefully. All right. Uh, last week we. Uh, we, um, we, we looked at products and platforms. Um, we looked at um, you know, an item or two like gas pump. We'll go through that in a minute. Uh, and we, uh, we determined that we would not have verticals yet, but that we would work on a sort of cross vertical um, uh, use case kind of a, a, a focus uh, for the cano yeah, and, and establish a canonical um, set of requirements, functional and non-functional for um, any kind of vertical. And then we would probably start to see verticals appearing. Clearly we already have um, a healthcare vertical 
that's you know practically forming. Um, you got Pill and Stefan, and, and they've been quite uh, active offline as well uh, in terms of meetings and getting people involved. Um, there was uh, a Microsoft Cat uh, person that was uh, that uh, uh, I won't name the name in case they don't want to be named. Um, but if anybody's confident that they can name them, they can go ahead and do that. I just don't want to take the liberty here. Was that Justin were... or somebody else? There you go. So somebody said it. <laughs> Didn't feel it was for me to say. Um, so there's all there's a lot of activity around healthcare already. Um, but that's you know, uh, and and supply chain obviously. So um, I suppose the other thing that we should add here are I'll put it right down here is um, invitation more SSC members. Um, I'm mindful of the fact that there are a bunch of folks um, from supply chain companies and from ERP, SS, you know, uh, SCM, SCM uh, CRM kinds of companies. And we're getting a lot of inbound. A lot of companies are calling. Uh, I was said on the last call, you know, pick a bank and they probably called. Um, and not just them. I mean, you know, John, I think uh, yeah. one of the actually important things that we should ask on those inbound calls is um, what would they see as a requirement for first action? Um, in other words, like what's their go-do? Like if they re if they wanted to do something, is there something they could test with, right? Like what was... <clears throat> yep. Inbounds. Say, say, can, can you say more on that, York, or did we lose you there? Yeah, um, I mean, it's basically thinking through, I was looking at your gas station um, uh, point that you made before. Um, and so the point was, like, if somebody wanted to test out the thesis, like, what would they go do? Um, what's their first action that we are giving people? Yeah, I like the way you put that. So, yeah. What do we tell them? What, what do we suggest they, they go do first? Yeah, I mean, uh, is there a simple test that they could, uh, is there a simple test that, that, that is available that would allow them to self-prove the thesis without them having to actually dive in and start developing code, right? Because the faster we prove, help them prove the thesis, the, the faster the progress, right? I like that a lot. Uh, anybody have any other thoughts on that, Joseph? Arwin? Yeah, one quick thought from me would be uh, I'll volunteer to test it out. <laughs> or said differently, I think I myself at least don't feel I have gone through this myself yet. Yeah, I mean, I, I think particularly for inbounds, uh, people are looking for validation, right? I think they're looking for, hey, is what is this? Is this real? Um, do I need to go into, do I need a developer to go, you know, really dig through this and code? Or is there a simple way we could actually uh, give them some, a sample or tooling, right? Uh, even on a web page, right? That, that showcases, um, you know, they can input their, Potentially, they could input some some data, right? That we would basically be able to show them, you know, through some kind of demonstration that you know the thesis holds. Yeah, I think it it would be it would be helpful to perhaps indeed have this a bit more formalized into sort of architectural you know, artifacts, UML interaction diagrams and things. And, um, and I think, York, that, that, that's a good idea. I have certain pieces like the, the, the zero knowledge aspect kind of, um, you know, taken out of it and made it interactive, right? Where you can basically, it's sort of like a little web tool that says, hey, put this in and this is what they will see. This is what will be, you know, submitted to the shield contracts and so forth. And, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe that's something I can try to contribute. I just didn't find any um, sort of efficient way for me to get to that level, right? Um, so, so maybe there's something there that's getting into more generalized, the deeper dive 
education aspect of this that at the end of this you come out and, and say wow yes that's what we need right mm -hmm. yeah i think it's it's sort of letting like if if you attack it from the perspective of different audiences right definitely we've got the right tooling there for a developer audience right but if a business person is going to make a decision to allow a developer to spend time on it they need to have a very quick answer right so prove to me that this works right and prove to me that this works could essentially be something they could actually do themselves which then um uh, removes the weeks of work that a developer would probably have to take to come back to them and prove it, right? So sort of like just getting over that first hurdle. So one thing that I can add over here from, from, from our side, and I know I had a conversation with Brian Chamberlain um, a week ago about this. Um, so we already have um, a VM in, in Azure, which is, which is ready to go. Um, essentially what we plan on doing. If anyone has seen um, what we did, um, I'm talking about Envision, what we did with the trusted rewards token um, built within the EEA is we created a web app out of that, right? So, so um, it was like a demo to showcase what was built out of the trusted compute working group. Um, so one thing that I know we can contribute here is we can host that demo of, of the UI and everything up and running once everything is all set. So you can go ahead and pass that, you know, ready to work demo of the Radish 34, you know, out there to whoever wants to see it so, so that they just don't have to go ahead and build it all over again, right? That's, that's one thing to help out. I don't know what the greater uh, plan was, but if you guys want someone to host that, uh, we'd be happy to, to host that here. Um, another thing was uh, we also just contributed. So um, just to your point, Stefan, to kind of see the different things that are happening within the Radish 34 demo, um, we wrote out those individual logs. So I know this is a little bit more of a, developer focused thing but one thing that we wanted to do is as as we demo this out to individuals um typically the c-suite uh they don't want to have to dig through the different logs to see what's happening with the zero knowledge proofs what's happening on the ui what's happening with the messaging services um so uh we contributed into into the readme file so that you can just go ahead and take those logs and just go and open up a new terminal and just enter that command that's that's getting a little bit into the weeds to to what you were discussing but uh it's kind of on the same topic uh that's fantastic um so maybe uh can daniel can you and york uh i know you guys are are Pretty, you know, you guys are a Microsoft uh, vendor, aren't you? Yep, yep. Yeah, so maybe you guys could buddy up on that. Um, York, I don't mean to volunteer you for something, but um, maybe we could. I, yeah, I know that uh, Brian and team, we were talking about a hosted version of the demo uh, of Radish 34 before we launched, and we, we, we kicked that off the back of the truck for other things. So it's again one, an, another testament to the community that, that somebody stepped up and did that. Um, I can chat with you guys offline about that. We kind of already have um, some ideas that are brewing. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea. Thanks, Daniel. All right. So, so shall we say that? Um, so uh, hosted to demo or hosted POC. Um, by, by say middle of April or next week, or how soon can we do it? I think, um, as soon as we get through some of the kinks that, that Radish 34 has now, you know, there's some, uh, there's some things that are going on in the issues, right? As soon as that's up and running and we can, we can verify the build, we'll go ahead and put that up. And then from there, it's just a couple hours to go and throw that into, um, hosted VM. Okay. Yeah, not a big effort. Um, the uh, the hosted version, as Brian Chamberlain here. Um, I just wanted to follow up with what I, what I heard from York was 
something that maybe is slightly different than the Radish POC, but it sounded something that was, I wonder if you could, you could just explain a little more about what you wanted to, would want to see in that kind of demonstration or it almost sounded like an extracted version of the, the protocol um, explained visually and then possibly with code that you could walk through like a, if I'm hearing correctly, even more distilled version of the protocol than what the POC offers, is that? Yeah, I think um, we probably should take offline what's, um, what, what's achievable with relatively little work, but also actually solves for, you know, sort of the request. And I think the request is, um, how can I easily demonstrate to myself um, that this thesis, that this thing works, right? Um, and so I want to take sort of a first sniff test on it, right? And I think John rightly put a quote, which is, if I am going to go ask somebody to do some work on this, uh, I kind of would like to know that it's real before I go do that, um, uh, you know, as a first sniff test. Um, uh, and so I think we might as well answer that question um, with something quite simple. Okay. Um, while we're on this topic, and it depends on the audience, but the inclusion of something in there around a proof of value or um, business case scenario, um, a bit abstracted from just the technology itself, would be particularly valuable just given the current climate. Um, Karen, could you say more about that? I, I was writing and I, I didn't pick up all of it, but it sounded pretty good. So could you repeat some of it? Sure. Um, just around not only uh, is it important to prove the, the efficacy of the technology and, and the novelty of what baseline is and what it's doing, but uh, particularly given the current climate as budgets and other things are, are being reassessed, uh, it's important to have a proof of value or even what we discussed before in the, the previous meeting, just a longer term strategy and vision for, for what um, a solution like this can provide to a company. Um, so. So prove why baselining is worthy of prioritization in time like any time like this in particular. In time yeah. Like um, and to, to make it even narrower, I mean, just from a, a financial standpoint, it's just the ultimate clarity you can give. Why do this versus something else? Exactly. Right. So why, why is this a, um, a more compelling, from a financial perspective, why is it a more compelling approach than what you would otherwise do, which would be a consortium, right? Exactly. Or 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 capex to to build a you know an MQ or or other kind of middleware right or ESB. Um, yeah, I think that is a big deal. In fact, um, I also Karen, think along with along with that, I think we should take a look at the personas, the potential personas that would use this. Um, I mean, you don't I think like you don't love Cecil the CISO. He's my he's my favorite. Well, I, I think we've been very focused on. Um, enterprise to enterprise um, business workflows, um, but I think there also is potentially a uh, business application value proposition that we haven't really talked about. So, you know, something like a SAP or Dynamics um, or, you know, other products like that that are, that could think about um, uh, this from a, you know, product solutioning perspective and an opportunity to leverage the, you know, basically a a message bus, right? Yeah. So if you put those two things together in your work, by the way, uh, you, anytime you want to set up a project from that does an SAP to dynamics uh, POC, mm -hmm. I think you should do it. Uh, and I, I think there are a lot of people that would, would chip in um, if, if you can help us get that, that uh, going um, or anything to dynamics would be awesome. Yeah, and I wasn't necessarily talking about interoperability, even like if you look at a value proposition in a message bus generally, right? Like any business application that uses message bus technology could now extend that to a multi-institutional message bus. 
Yeah, and I think that's really the key. It's starting to compare what, say, the B2B space and generalized looks like today, right? Many, many, many EDI point-to-point -point connections buried deep, deep, deep in ERPs. Um, you know, and say, what, what is the problem with, what is the problem with that? I mean, people have been coping with this for the last 30 years. People think that's the greatest thing, right? That's good. That's, that's where it is, right? I think it needs this, this convincing story to say, oh, duh, right? And what I use in, in other efforts is a decentralized single sign-on will give you what we 15 or 10 years ago decided enterprises need because all of these different websites that they're bringing up internally, right? So, so maybe something that simplifies it that far out and then say, okay, the reason why this has not happened until now is because of this and this, and this is what baseline solves. Right on. Um, and, and I think from an industry perspective, so Karen and Stefan, you might be uh, two, you know, along with York, uh, be really good buddies for uh, maybe a project uh, can show us how to do that in a minute. Um, on this topic um, that at least produces a deck um, that isn't, you know, I mean, I've, I've been writing about this a long time, but I think I'm starting to hear my own voices. I mean, it might, might be really good to have, uh, you know, fresh voices around this. I mean, if you want my answer to some of this in terms of the, in times like these, it's not about um, uh, versus consortium, it's a or consortia. Um, I think that it would be very hard right now to, to justify a consortia getting together um, in these times not impossible, but hard. Um, but it, to be able to say, look, um, we can get rid of the, the, the capital expense of, um, of doing the thing you had to do anyway, good times or bad times, the plumbing has to go in because we have a new partner or we have a new regulation. We have to comply with this new, this new world and there's a new compliance that we have to, we have to agree to and it involves these multiple companies and we need to get it up fast. And now that we're strapped for cash and we're debt ridden, et cetera, et cetera, uh, maybe it's okay for us to finally accept the idea that there's this always on state machine we can use without having to set one up. And I think too, at this point with where the blockchain stands with the technology, you'd be hard pressed to show somebody a use case that they haven't thought of before. And with the complexity of zero knowledge, anything beyond a high level understanding isn't going to provide that much additional value in a lot of ways um, because the, the complexity of it just grows very quickly. So um, the more attention you can put to understanding the, the system as a whole, I think that the stronger the, the, the case is. And I guess just to add on to that, I think that those are all really, really, really good points. Um, there was an action item for me from from the last call to pass along um, a survey of questions. And Karen, what you're asking, there's a couple questions that are specifically addressing how to identify the business ROI from a requirements gathering session. So for example, you know, some of the questions that we asked, um, you know, are are along the lines of, you know, if if there are unauthorized usage of whatever the asset that you're trying to protect are, what is the financial implication up and down the stream? You know, um, if certain requirements of these non-functional requirements are not met what is the financial implications? And some of them could be very, very costly. And I think that um, we kind of have, uh, no pun intended, we have a baseline of questions that we can ask that, that helps identify where that is. Um, I know I posted that on, on the Oasis uh, thread. I'm not sure you know, if, 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 if everyone got it, but again, I'd be happy to circulate that again. And, and I'll have a look for it. Thanks. Sure. Could we, could we, are you looking for input? If you, I would suggest maybe just share it as a shared document. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a great idea. And by the way, um, everybody should golf clap for, for Daniel and team for producing such a nice uh, um, first um, uh, uh, class on baseline protocol. Uh, yeah, they really stepped up. Uh, they, they actually offer a class in, in the Azure marketplace. Um, I barely understand baselining myself, and I've been on it for a 
while so I was prying and yet these guys have already put up a class on it for money um, and uh, and you did that free session which was great um, that's on the YouTube channel so if anybody didn't know there's a YouTube channel um, for baseline protocol and there's a playlist um, and, and I, I, I've had some feedback that maybe the playlist isn't the best way to do these things that we should put them on the channel. But I also like to um, give credit to the people that do the work. And so like the TSC and the SSC meetings last week were done by a, a kind individual in the Chainlink community that built these nice videos. And we, I, I said, just put it on your own channel and then we'll put it on our playlist. Um, so definitely check the playlist, which is baseline, baseline or something like that. Maybe, John, maybe I agree with your, um, I agree with your motivation there. Maybe, maybe it makes sense to um, um, just come up with standard, like sort of framework that says, you know, if somebody produces content, we'll leave it on their channel for the first N number of weeks or whatever. Right. And then um, we'd like to ultimately move it over into the baseline channel. That's a good, yeah. We, the alternative to that is um, we, we do it on the, on the channel. Uh, by the way, the, there's a little extra work in that because it's, it's you know, that means one, uh, myself or somebody else has to get the file and upload it to YouTube. Yep. Um, it's, it's much easier to just hit the playlist save. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, we could say, hey, you know, if you do it, feel free to put a PSA for yourself in, in the video, but we want it on the channel. Um, yeah. So there's a couple yeah. ways. To do this. Agreed. All right. Yes, um, so so we did the webinar and, um, you know, uh, I guess that there was the option that we could uh, either host it, uh, you know, on our platform. Um, but I also have the MP4, right? So I'd be, I'd be more than happy just to pass along the MP4, right? And we can host it in both. I wish there was a way on the channel to just pin something to the channel, but have it go to the other guy's thing. We'll figure yeah. it out. Uh, yeah, sure. It's a, an issue for the uh, another day. I think we have higher priorities issues right now, mm -hmm. um, so we'll we'll put a pin in that one. Uh, Karen and Stefan, I I kind of did not officially. I, I wrote your names down under under this issue, but um, it's probably on that. That was an unkind act on my part. <laughs> um, I didn't ask your permission. So, uh, is that something you guys want to buddy up on or not? And and no is a perfectly good answer. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, on my side. Okay. You guys are both on Slack. Karen, I, I, I heard ah, I didn't hear yes. Uh, I better get it. Yes, that works for me as well. <laughs> Good. I just want to be respectful of your time. I know you're both incredibly busy. Um, okay. So if you're, if you're game for that one, um, and, and please, uh, you can put me to work for you on that as well. Yeah, the only thing, I'm, exactly what that, that's, thanks, John, that's what I want to say. I think I can start leading in with, you know, what, Sort of, I need to to click and click through um, to to get that that cohesive sort of story, right? Um, but then I'm not sure I can fill in, right? So so I, I may need then you know you guys to contribute with the since you I mean you've been thinking and and briefing this for for quite a while, right? So so hopefully you can uh, then just fire off. I'm I'm sure you all agree that the the hardest the the premium uh, in a community like this is not on work necessarily, but on initiative, right? So people can react pretty well to things, but, yeah. but it's hard to initiate and, and actually spur action. There's a, there's a person in, in consensus that, uh, you know, I, I, I often say they, they provide willpower services, right? They just have willpower and they say, let's do this. And, and people go, okay. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it looks like power, but it's not, it's just willpower. Um, so, uh, if you guys can provide the willpower services, then you can, you know, it's easy for me or any, any of us to, to react to that and say, so yeah, uh, put us to work. Right? Say, hey, we need this. We need that. Um, and yeah, you guys are both on the Slack. So, yeah. hey, hey, Karen, what time zone are you in? Central. Uh, in Houston, so central. Okay. All right. I'm Pacific. So, yeah. Hey York, is your um, is your um, uh, are you on the GitHub? I think so. What's your handle? Uh, York Roads Three. Oh, uh, you're not in this project yet. Okay, let me go there. Yeah. All right. Well, um, so I've, I've assigned Daniel to this. 
Um, you'll see that this is, so this is the, um, this is the next part of our agenda, I think. Review perspective maintain, no, that's the TSC, sorry. Gosh darn it, there. Uh, I'm gonna push the incentive framework and funding down to the bottom. Uh, if we have time, well, let's do this working session. Um, we just identified, and by the way, this is a really great team. I, already people are chiming in, We've got great ideas. We're not grandstanding. So I'd like to commend everybody for um, good, good um, online team skills. So the personas, um, that's, a, that's a great example of a project. Uh, prove why baselining is worthy. So I'd like to, to show you how we would do this so that you can do it yourself. Um, does anybody not know how to get Zen Hub on their GitHub thing? Okay, uh, the, the step one, get Zen Hub. No, uh, just, so Zen Hub appears as a tab when you, when you enable it in Chrome, but you can also just navigate to, you can go to Zen Hub um, and uh, this is enabled, uh, Oasis handles this for us. Uh, Zen Hub is an overlay to GitHub itself. Um, and so one of the things GitHub doesn't allow you to do is Zen Hub does uh, within GitHub is, or as an overlay to GitHub is projects and epics. We, we, we went through these last week. So let's just create a new, a new project called, um, uh, what, what do we, what do we say? Uh, prove why baselining is worthy of prioritization. So, um, uh, content that quickly proves baseline utility. Is that good? Yeah, no, okay. So I'm saving it and um, now I'm going to add an epic. Uh, we'll call this um, uh, why now deck. Please change this, <laughs> uh, Karen and Stefan, but I'm giving this to you guys. So the uh, uh, why now deck, yeah, we'll call it that. And now you see that this is part, and we can say that this, this project's gonna go on until the 14th, let's say. Or we can make it until the end of the month. Let's make it until the end of the month. These things can take time. And um, now this view, I think in some ways good, but some ways kind of a pain, does not allow you to add epics underneath these epics or stories underneath these epics. So you go into the thing and spawns a new window and I'm going to put the assignees. I don't know if you guys, um, Stefan or, and Karen, do you have uh, GitHub IDs in here yet? I'm guessing I, not. I don't know. I don't think I do. All right. So I'll leave this alone until you guys get in there. You can assign it to yourselves. Um, and you'll see, you know, right now we just have a why now deck. Now you can add a new issue to it and say, uh, I'll just, I got I to add, Brian, that was where I was saying that the templates are not populating. Um, um, yeah, uh, I'll just blow this out and I'll say, um, uh, why now deck, we could say spike on uh, research, um, uh, why the, um, why companies should prioritize, companies should prioritize baselining. In hard times, say, again, I'm just making this up, please fix it. And then you can write your, um, your epic language in here and you, you see here, you'll see if you've enabled Zenhub, you see that it says create an epic. So this can itself be an epic. We only use issues for engineering tasks. So epics can nest. So this could be a, a, a topic within a topic and ultimately a story or some, some non-engineering task, but we only use issues for 
podcasts. So create that epic, and then you can, uh, and, and that's it. So we're going to create the epic, and it should be within uh, the dependency of uh, of the um, of the of the higher level epic. Not inside an epic, so we we, we do that. We we put in um, what was it called? Da, uh, 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 did I call that thing? Why now deck? There it is. So when we, we do that, now it's inside the why now deck. And as we finish it, as it gets done, this will start to populate up. Everybody good? Af offline, after this meeting, I'll, I'll, do a, I'll do a couple more based on the, the notes that we have here, the personas, York, that was a good idea. Um, and the VM in Azure, I think I just created that. So here, um, Daniel and, and, uh, and folks hosted baseline POC demos is in there and I've got, I've got a first epic in there. You guys can finish it out and, and you can add engineering tasks to that one, obviously, because there are some, and, and you do that in the form of issues. Any questions on that? Wait, Owen, I see you. Yep, go ahead. Zenhub, um, the, like the main three features of Zenhub that we're using here. One is obviously the, the Gantt chart. Yep. And then you've got the board. Um, and th th this is a task that we have um, uh, for the maintainers is to build the uh, correct pi pipelines. Um, so this is getting done. Right now we just added three more maintainers to the list. Okay. Um, so that's one of the action items. Uh, to so it's sort of like a, like a Trello overlay on, on GitHub. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's just in GitHub and it's free. Nice. Um, or it's directly integrated in GitHub in a deep way. So um, yeah, that's it. Um, uh, sorry, John, did you have a question for me? Yeah. Oh, and I just wanted to mention that you've got a messaging one down here. Why don't you go ahead and take control of that one? Just put your yeah. name on it and uh, start to flesh out the sub epics and epics within those epics and what have you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because I put comments into the, the, the GitHub epic, but I wasn't sure where to put the rest of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just go right in here and uh, you can flesh it all here. One of the nice things about here is that uh, it's not cluttering up the actual GitHub uh, environment. Uh, the projects and epics are objects that are ex, uh, exogenous to GitHub itself. So you're not going to confuse engineering by putting stuff in here. At least you shouldn't. And uh, Brian, I, I, you know, check my six on that. If it turns out it's confusing, uh, let me know. Um, uh, all right. So that's, that's this. So I thought if there's no further, wait, Brian, were you trying to get a question in there too? I, I saw your, your face light up on the when you're uh, no 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 okay just want to make sure so um, this morning and yesterday over the weekend I, I wrote a few of these and I thought that's what we could do for the remainder of the, uh, of the of our time release for the next fifteen minutes before we do our final stuff is to just go through some of these and. Um, and give you, and, and then let's all kind of come up with our own if, if we're missing any. So I thought we'd give 10 minutes of quiet time and we use the chat uh, window to, um, to list, you know, to type our own that we can then uh, integrate in here. So um, ones that I've already put in are uh, fast deploy of baseline components. Um, that's a project that could be done. What we, the goal of this, I'm sorry, is to, is, to, is to start to set up the things that we can point people to, to say, hey, look over here, shiny object, things, something you can work on. The community is really raring to go. Um, hmm. And so all we have to do is say, hey, something to work on over here. And it seems like we'll, we'll have somebody working on it. Um, 
and where, where that isn't happening will be interesting too, right? Because that's where we can apply incentives or we can go find other people. Um, so a, a system of record integration tools, um, the Unibright folks and the Chainlink folks and, and uh, others are already working on this one. Um, and there's even, um, uh, in, in York, this might be where you might want to put in a, a pro, a, an epic or another project entirely uh, around the idea of, of dynamics and, um, and working with some other thing. And yes, I would love to see a SAP slash dynamics example of using baselining between those two systems would be, uh, it, it, it could achieve what Karen was talking about. I mean, people would be like, aha. Uh, um, add, or at least in part. Uh, add baselining to Truffle. That's another one. Corp identity, DID, and global phone book. Um, you know, clearly we need a connection, both the messaging system and uh, uh, a lot of other things needs. Um, you know, we, this is partly an influencer campaign. campaign. We've got to go make sure that the uh, identity folks are getting their job done so that we can utilize it. And that, but that our standards for the um, org registry are um, in line with that. So we, we need to make sure that the org registry is DID compliant and that we write the spec that way. Uh, yep. Brian, did you, you, you're up. You're up. Oh, I think we lost him. Um, anyway, there's the rest of them, right? There's gas pump, you know, system. Uh, oh, there's see, that's another problem here is we've got two system integrations. Um, so we can delete this one. It's got no, got nothing on it. Oh yeah. Delete the project. Um, Corp identity rebasing, yeah. So uh, ways to establish consistent, reestablish consistency when it's been lost between two systems. A baseline proof will tell you that you're consistent or not, but it won't tell you the data, right? So if you know the data's been lost and all all parties haven't don't have it anymore, then you have an issue. Um, workflow step tools, how to make more more workflow steps and that sort of thing, etc. So um, a lot of projects that can come up here. Can we take ten minutes? And um, and just use the group chat, and um, just let there there can be silence on the line. If anybody needs to talk, uh, feel free, uh, or you can sidebar chat with people. But um, let's let's see if we can list uh, a, a number of other project topics, starting now. Doing this in chat, John? Uh, yeah, it might as well just use the Zoom group chat. I was thinking about using a separate tool, but I just figured it was easiest to do it this way. Bill, uh, I, I answered your question about, uh, yeah, you won't see any of these in, in GitHub issues, only on Zen Hub. Uh, and, and that's a, that's a feature, not a bug. You want, you want the Zen Hub, uh, you want the GitHub issues to only be engineering tasks that you then connect to, to Zen Hub epics.
I'll, I'll make a quick prompt, uh, voice prompt here. Uh, in the last three or four minutes, um, you might can think about things like different kinds of POC projects. Like uh, I just added one DSCSA in healthcare. You know, what would baselining look like in that environment? That would be an interesting project. That's one thing that we could add here. Nick, you might want to add uh, FRTBs. <laughs> uh, don't add any that you're planning on building internally as a proprietary solution. <laughs> Okay, and that's time. Everybody good? Anybody need a little more time? Oh, Offline. I, I, haven't, I haven't been able to view the repository via ZenHub yet, so I spent my, the entirety of the time. All right, um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't worry about it for now. I mean, um, but we can debug that later um, but yeah uh, definitely want to if you feel free to, for the rest of the time if you want to add stuff to the chat um, and if you can't or just go into slack later on um, and I'm gonna make sure to copy this right now just so I've got it okay um, can I'm, that just be a housekeeping item John for the group um, that yep. everybody gets their github is established and connections to Zen Hub. Right. Um, and in fact, if you, um, here, I'll do this in the, hold on for a second. I want to add this to Slack so I don't lose it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to connect to Zen Hub and it's asking me to connect to all of, all of my personal repos, but, but not to um, but I can't find the connection to baseline. Uh, once you've gone past through that step, I think you can just go back into the baseline. I've just done it. I connected to one of my personal repos and then just went back into the Oasis and it was mm. there. Then. Ah, okay, cool. That's, that's what I'll do then. Thanks. Oh, darn it. Well, I want to make sure I, I don't lose that thing. I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And uh, yeah, so 
Can I just put this here somewhere? Chat. Um, okay, so. Oh, darn. Um, I'll tell you what, I'm having trouble uh, copying out the chat. Uh, can uh, hey Nick, you, could you could you make sure we don't lose that chat thread? Copy it to something. Um, or uh, it yeah. should be available in the recording as well, John. When okay. it comes. Oh, that's right. You're right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, so it, it sounds like we've gotten some some pretty interesting ones. And we can review those. Um, so the only additional task here is, uh, you know, think through the ones that you like, um, that you've done, or that other people have done, and plug them into the into the board. Um, the Zen Hub, yeah, you can go to Zen Hub, uh, the web app. Uh, so you can go straight to uh, app.zenhub.com, and uh, like this, and you'll have the board um, in this way. Or you can use the the, the Chrome plugin. Will also work. Um, and I do notice that those projects are not, oh, yeah, it's cause I'm in the wrong workplace, but it'll work. So, um, that was that. I hope that was, uh, useful for everybody. I think that's a, a pretty good example of the kind of thing that we're, we're going to want to be doing on this community. Um, uh, action item for, uh, I'll, I'll follow up with everybody and ask for new um, ideas about people that should join the SSC. And other than that, I think that we've got our agenda done. Uh, we do. Uh, we will talk about incentive programs elsewhere and uh, we're gonna need to decide the next meeting uh, date and time. Uh, the TSC uh, elected to do one week from now, just the same time. Do you wanna, does anybody object to that for the, TS, the SSC this time. Um, eventually, we want to go to biweeklies, maybe even monthlies, but right now we're. It's good for me. Sounds good. All right. And Arwen, thanks for slacking me that. Um, great. Um, everybody, thanks for the time. We'll we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Have a good week. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Okay. Okay.